Welcome to this video in the Patterns in Nature topic. So this video will be looking at two dot points, outline the historical development of the cell theory, in particular the contributions of Robert Hooke and Robert Brown, and describe evidence to support the cell theory. So firstly, we need a little bit of a background on what the cell theory is before we can start to really unpack it a bit more. So the cell theory is one of the fundamental concepts in biology. It simply states three things, that all living things are composed of cells or all the products of cells such as viruses. The cell is the basic unit of structure and organisation in organisms and all cells are produced from pre-existing cells. So basically what we have to do is have a look at the history behind coming up with these three dot points as well as the evidence that was provided to support them. So firstly we're going to look at Robert Hooke who was specifically mentioned in the syllabus dot point. So Robert Hooke is credited with being the first person to see cells and to actually give them that name. So using a primitive microscope very similar to this one here, so this is a sketch of the microscope that he used, he looked at pieces of cork which we know uh, is the bark of trees and what he saw when he had a look at the cork was tiny little boxes and he thought that they looked very similar to the rooms that monks lived in in monasteries and they were referred to as cells or the same as um, compartments of a jail, we referred to them as cells and that's how he gave the name cells to what he saw. Next we had Antoine van Leeuwenhoek who in 1676 sorry, used a very simple microscope that had a very excellent lens and what he was able to do is he was able to look at a drop of water through this lens and was able to see that there were tiny little microorganisms floating around in the water. Once uh, van Leeuwenhoek did his observations of the drops of water, he also looked at bits of gunk in his teeth over the next 150 years, the microscopes began to improve and it was suspected that the cells were present in all living things. We then had Robert Brown. Okay, again, he was another one from our syllabus dot point and he was the first one to discover the structures inside of cells. So he was the one that discovered and described the nucleus inside plant cells. So when we start having a look at cells and their organelles, we'll see that the nucleus is uh, one of the larger organelles within the cell and therefore it's quite easy to observe. We then had, have Matthias Schleiden and Theodor Schwann in 1839. They formulated the cell theory that all living things are made up of cells. So Schwann was the first scientist to see that yeast cells produced new cells. So they didn't just come out of anywhere, that we had to have a yeast cell present in order for more yeast cells to come about. And by about 1840, the cell theory was becoming, becoming accepted by most biologists because cells were observed in every organism that was studied. Then lastly, we have Rudolf Virchow and Walter Fleming. And these two German scientists clarified the process of cell division. So this is how cells went from one cell to multiple cells. So this established the principle that all cells came from pre-existing cells. So basically what they observed was mitosis taking place under the microscope. So we also, as we said in the syllabus dot point, we need to be able to describe evidence that supports the cell, the cell theory. So evidence supporting the cell theory has come about almost entirely from the use of microscopes to examine living things. So all the way back in the 1600s, we had very simple microscopes, but they were able to magnify things by enough to be able to see uh, microscopic features, in particular the cells. Our knowledge of cell structure and function has developed as the technology of microscopes has advanced over the last 300 years or so. And initially, only light microscopes were available, but in the 1930s, we had the invention of what is now known as the electron microscope, which allows us to magnify cells by up to nearly two million or up to at least two million times with a much greater resolution. And therefore, we're able to reveal much more detail of the cell structure and therefore their function. And that's all for this video. So thank you.